here Holy Trinity is always looking out. People are always looking out for more opportunities to share, to grow, to kind of raise that bar of commitment. And that is an exciting place to be a part of, I think. People want to help other people. And I think that's what's alive in this church is that people aren't self-centered or selfish. They want, to, they want to make other people benefit from God's love. determination and faith. I, I really believe that because we have seen so much in the, in the time that we've been members. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit is there. On the morning of June 14, 1959, worshipers at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church came together only to find the doors to their new church closed. The gathering crowd grew curious as the time drew closer for the start of the first service there until Holy Trinity's pastor, Reverend Allison Linne, opened the doors from inside and stepped outside. After leading his congregation in prayer, he pushed open both doors to the new church building and on cue, the organist started to play a fitting entrance hymn. Pastor Lene began the procession into the church with the congregation following, and thus began a new era for Holy Trinity Evangelical Lutheran Church, part of 50 years of history. Holy Trinity's foundation was established nearly four years before that first service. In 1955, Harold Lee was transferred to Pease Air Force Base and could not find a Lutheran church in the Portsmouth area. So he, along with some other interested Lutherans at the base, decided to start one. At first, it was a small group that held services at Pease, then at a Baptist church in Portsmouth. All the while, the wheels were in motion for the new mission to become a recognized church. During the organizational period, Reverend Lene accepted the call to move from Los Angeles to become the first pastor of the Portsmouth Mission. By the fall of 1957, the pieces were in place. On Reformation Sunday, October 27th, 140 people gathered at the Wentworth Acre School for the first worship service. That evening at the first congregational meeting, signatures were placed on the church charter, affirming the birth and the name of Holy Trinity Evangelical Lutheran Church. Things moved quickly from there. Three acres were purchased for $9,000 and ground broken in 1958 for the new church that opened its doors in 1959. By then, there were 190 adults and 140 children in the congregation. So in 1962, the first building expansion was needed. And in 1995, Holy Trinity took on its current look. In 1960, Reverend Lene departed he was the first of 11 pastors to serve Holy Trinity over 50 years. Since 2000, Pastor Lynn Opterbeck has guided Holy Trinity, continuing traditions and starting new ones, leading the church into the next half century. It's just a, an exciting place to do ministry. I mean, every day something happens, really, literally every day, uh, where ministry can be shared or given. Uh, whether it's my receiving it or giving it or, or encouraging it in, in one way or another, um, that is a great, great place to be a part of. Whether it's around the world or around the seacoast, Holy Trinity's commitment has never wavered because the commitment within the church is the true foundation. You live your faith. It's not just something that you just put on the shelf and you take down Sunday morning and have. I think this church reaffirms for people that want to be um, connected with God throughout their life, through their work, through their worship, through their service. When Resurrection Lutheran uh, merged with Holy Trinity back in the 90s, uh, Resurrection sold their building in Rochester and came with $80,000, and they had to decide, what are we going to do with the $80,000? It was perfect timing because Holy Trinity was building the sanctuary. Uh, but the folks then said, no, we need to kind of share that. And so instead of spending it uh, toward the sanctuary, which was an obvious need, they gave it to a mission congregation in Amherst, New Hampshire. I think that spirit of, of giving what you have, of sharing what you have, uh, is really just playing itself out in Tanzania and Guatemala and our relationship with the Indonesian church as well. Uh, that it's just, uh, we've, we've kind of, I think, caught the vision of how exciting it is to share what you have. 
Work continues in Guatemala through mission trips and funding to build a nursery for orphans. We have the interest to expand out of our own little neighborhood here and really we support things locally, nationally and internationally and really set God's word out uh, beyond our own eight walls here. In 2006, it was a trip to Tanzania where members received far more than they gave. It was magical. I mean, it was so exciting. There was a lot of singing and dancing to communicate with them through song and through dance and through motions and, and um, expressions was wonderful. There are 12 of us, but really uh, back in New Hampshire, there are over 400 who are with us. I think the exciting thing for all of us on the trip was to see how these folks in Tanzania live out their faith. Uh, they literally have nothing, and yet they're so generous with that which they almost don't have. In the year following that trip to Tanzania, Holy Trinity members purchased over 12 tons of grain and corn to help the drought-stricken congregation while also funding 30 scholarships so children in Izamani could continue their education. Let's try that. Christ is risen. I don't think you were shouting. You had your inside voices again. Holy Trinity's get children get an early voices. sense of belonging. Back, okay? It's I'll always been Christ fun for me to be with the youth. They're, they're so alive, uh, they're so fresh, uh, that, that to be risen. with the youth is sort of the joy of being a pastor in many, many ways. Oh, that's very good. Let's try even louder. It gives responsibility to young people. It just doesn't give them things or you know, find ways to include them to have fun activities, but it seeks for ways to connect with people, to have young people to make them responsible. <laughs> It was only fitting that as Holy Trinity approached its anniversary year, they would be able to return the favor to a new mission. Starting in 2000, Emmanuel Indonesian Congregation began using the church for Sunday afternoon services. In May of 2007, they joined the ELCA, becoming Emmanuel Indonesian Lutheran Church. Holy Trinity was a small family 50 years ago, but today and for tomorrow, the mission is clear. The mission statement that we adopted a few years back, uh, come together, grow in faith, serve the Lord, really sets the tone for today and perhaps for tomorrow as well, to continue to be a welcoming place where, where folks who want to worship can come together. And then of course that constant growing, that we just can't be kind of settled where we are, that we need to stretch ourselves, whether it's through Christian education, whether it's through uh, service, whether it's through volunteering in other ways here in the congregation, outside of the congregation, uh, many opportunities for our youth especially to try to enable them to grow in their faith and then to serve the Lord. That really has always been a strong point here at Holy Trinity and continues to be. The more we give of ourselves, the more we serve, the more we receive. And, and that's what makes that dynamic work. And so from the very beginning, Holy Trinity was a place of welcoming, reaching out, uh, trying to provide for, for the opportunity to right at our doorstep.